Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to five tips to play bubble free on the oboe. So you may think that uh, you have no choice but to put up with um, water in your instrument, um, that you have no choice to worry about it before a concert, um, that this is something that just goes hand in hand with playing the oboe. And today's presentation is to show you a couple of ways where you don't have to live with this this way. You don't have to live with that uh, worry about um, whether or not you're going to get water in your key. You don't have to live with that worry that you don't know how to get that water out. <laughs> um, because I'm going to show you today five tips to playing bubble free on the oboe. My name is Erin Brophy. I am the principal oboe player of the Saskatoon Symphony and the University of Saskatchewan sessional lecturer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, the reason that I'm doing these live presentations um, has to do with my origin story on the instrument. Um, I'm originally, I live in Saskatchewan now, but I'm originally from a remote place in Canada, in Northern Ontario, a place that is full of beautiful rocks and trees and is very, very far away from other oboe players. <laughs> when I started on the oboe, um, I lived in this beautiful place and um, I didn't have access to good information. Um, I did not have access to a functioning instrument and I did not have access to functioning leads. And for that reason, because I lived so remotely at that time, um, I had lots of inspiration uh, for making music, but no real way of uh, how to improve. Um, and I discovered once I got access to a functioning oboe and I got access to uh, functioning reeds and I had the lucky opportunity to have fabulous, good information. Once I had those things, I was off to the races and able to improve on the instrument in the way and make the instrument sound how the music in my head sounded. Some, what was happening before is this tool, this instrument was getting in the way of me being able to express myself in music. Um, and that is why I'm doing these live presentations. Uh, we have this amazing uh, resource called the internet, and um, it is uh, my philosophy and uh, my dedication uh, to you uh, so that you don't have to struggle on the instrument as I did. If you fast forward now 20 plus 25 years, <laughs> I've been performing and teaching, and um, I've worked with dozens and dozens of, uh, of oboe players, and um, I just love watching them grow and learn and doing it at a much faster pace than I was able to. So that's why I'm doing these live presentations. It's also why I created a program called the Oboe Path, which is a six-month group online program that uses an online masterclass, a personalized, customized plan, and laser one-on-one -on -one feedback to enable an oboist to play with joy and ease. Through the group online masterclass, my oboists stay accountable. They also are inspired by watching their community of like-minded oboe players improve. Through the um, a personalized, customized plan. They know exactly what they need to practice each day. They know exactly, exactly how to improve and thus they don't waste their practice time. With the laser one-on-one -on -one feedback, when they do come to practicing, um, they are able to fit uh, the oboe into their busy lives because their practicing is efficient and they see their progress week to week to week. It's a wonderful program. Five tips to playing bubble free on the oboe. So the first thing I want to talk about is a swab. Um, this is a, a swab that I quite like. Um, and this is what is you're going to be your number one saving grace to playing bubble free on the oboe. Um, swabs come in many shapes and sizes. If you're looking for a good swab, I would suggest something that has something on the end of it. Uh, the reason that um, I like the uh, string on the end of the, of the swab is so when I put the swab through my oboe, which I put through the bottom, um, when I put it through, that if for whatever reason there happens to be a little knot in that swab, that there is a way that I can pull the swab back out. Thus, I won't get a swab stuck in an oboe. Um, it happens actually quite a bit that you get a small little knot, and I think it's because you're turning the oboe and you're swabbing quite regularly. Um, how often one should swab? Um, 
I certainly every single time you play the oboe, you should swap it at the end. Um, I find that if I have 25 or 30 bars rest when I'm playing in band or orchestra, I'll swab at that point too. You do not have to swab every eight measures. Um, I, you know, it's not something you have to continuously do. But if I was looking at a two and a half hour service, I probably have swabbed maybe five times during that time, just to give you a frame of reference. Um, there are other swabs that don't have a tie at the end. This is a, a Yamaha swab, but it is plenty long enough that you can pull it through and there's still cloth at the end to pull it back through, which is what you're looking for in a swab. Now, the reason why we want to use a swab is that when we get water in our oboe, what's happening is um, it's not spit, it's condensation. It's from our hot air in a cold tube, our oboe. And um, what's happening is that that uh, condensation is creating what I, I, because I live in a city with many rivers, it, it, um, it's creating a river down the back of the oboe. And what the swab is doing is it's kind of disrupting the river. Um, and it's, it's making so that the, uh, that the uh, moisture is evenly distributed inside the bore of the instrument and it's uh, distributing where the rivulets of water are. When you're ha if you're in a situation where you have chronic water, where you're always getting water in your C natural key, or you're always getting water in your A flat key, whatever the key may be, um, it's because that river, for whatever reason, has decided to run right into that hole. <laughs> and so swabbing it is going to help uh, disrupt that. The more you swab, you can even shine the inside of your oboe with running the swab uh, over and over and over so that you create a new way for that water to go down your instrument. The second thing I wanted to show you um, is if you do, if you know, you've been swabbing quite a bit and you do get water in a key, one of your best friends um, is this thin piece of cigarette paper. Now, um, how to figure out where you're getting water depends on what note you're getting water. So what I, uh, what I keep in mind when I'm looking for water is I, I, I register what note is the water happening on. And um, say, for example, the water is happening on your A natural. What you want to do is look at your oboe and look at the next open space, the next open hole. And whatever that open hole is, that's where your water is. So in the case of the A natural, the next open hole is your G key. So if your A has water in it, then you put a cigarette paper, you can put cigarette paper underneath, underneath this G key, and this will soak up a little bit of the water. Um, that uh, that can, ha can help a great deal. Um, just to hammer home the point, if you're getting water in your C key, um, the hole that opens next is not this one, but indeed this one. This is where your water is, is in this key right here. So if the C natural, the water is in this key. So looking at your elbow and figuring out what is the next hole that's open, and that's where the water is sitting. Now, uh, there are many options for cigarette paper. I would recommend for cigarette paper that you stay away from cigarette paper that has a gum on it. Like, um, like a sticky substance because you don't want that to get under the keys. There are several, several other new options available on the market right now. Um, some made of bamboo, uh, which has a nice sustainable, um, and I've used them and it, I quite like the bamboo uh, cigarette paper. And also the flute players have this microfiber, um, little uh, piece of microfiber that's working quite well at soaking up the water. That can uh, work quite well, um, especially if you're trying to be quiet in orchestra and remove water. Um, it's also connected to uh, the next tip I would give you, which is if you get water in a key and um, you're putting the cigarette paper in and it's not soaking up, it's not soaking up, there's just water, 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 what you can do um, is two things. You're going to use your air. So I'm going to take this bottom joint off because usually for whatever reason I get water in my top joint. <laughs> um, and what you're going to do is... Um, Actually, once you've identified where the water is, is you're going to blow the water out. Um, and what you want to you want to imagine you're a flute player for a moment and blow across the hole so it sends the water away like this, or like this. Now, this makes a lot of noise, and um, do not do this during the soft clarinet solo. <laughs> if you would like your colleagues to like you, or when the principal cello is playing a long diminuendo. Um, 
if if you don't have the option to blow and make that quite that loud sound then what i would suggest you do is put the cigarette paper underneath that key and um you're going to take your finger and put it at the end here um and you're going to cover up the hole as if, you're going to cover up the hole so that everything is closed and you're going to blow into the oboe while you over and over lift the key that has the water in it like this oh and it always falls <laughs> okay not always maybe uh, 35 percent of the time i'll just get a new piece so um i guess uh, this is why the stagehands at my concert hall are always finding little pieces of cigarette paper at my feet <laughs> so um i'm gonna put this underneath here and i'm going to blow while i go up and down do is it's going to send the water into my cigarette paper it makes a little bit less sound than blowing across and i'm going to continue to do that until the cigarette paper is dry um, and you can do this kind of subtly um, while the other things are going on around you and this is a really good way to get that water out of the key so keep going until the water is dry now um, if you're if it's qu taking quite a long time, you might want to you might be find yourself in what I like to call a knockout situation, where um, you're actually it would be a benefit to sort of knock the water out of um, out of that key. Now, this tip comes with a caveat, which is obviously the oboe is a very as I'm sure you've noticed a very fragile instrument, and you want to be um, confident that you're not going to uh, bend a key or um, hurt the oboe in any way. So what I would suggest is that you hold the, the oboe quite lightly, like with a loose, not, not gripping, but with a loose grip in, in, in your right hand. And you're going to take your other hand and on the kind of the fatty tissue here, um, you're going to just knock it gently. I want you to hear it's I'm not, I'm not like, using all of my strength to get it out. Um, I'm just simply knocking, I'm using some gravity. And what I wanna do is then I wanna look down the bore of the instrument and what I should see, if there's still water, is I should see little water droplets. Um, usually when you look down the bore, it should be like a shiny cylinder, like um, holding it up, especially when you're on the concert hall, holding it up to the light, it should be a really shiny cylinder. And once you've knocked out that water, if you see water inside that bore, then again, your swab is your best friend. Um, it's going to uh, shine that bore up as I'm looking down. It's nice and shiny now. And I'm going to uh, knock it again. And it is only uh, if there is more water, I'm going to swab again. And I'm going to keep knocking until that bore is shiny after I've knocked. And that can get some water out of, uh, out of a key. Um, the knockout, <laughs> the knockout is something that is particularly useful when you have water in your octave key. And I'm going to show you why with a really terrible drawing. <laughs> I apologize how terrible this drawing is. Um, and uh, it's a good thing I make my uh, living as an oboist and not as an artist. Okay, so let me explain what this drawing is. This is a drawing of your octave key. So where a lot of people get water in their instruments um, has to do with their uh, octave key. So what ends up, so on this bottom here, this is the bottom part of your oboe here. This is the top part of your oboe right here. This here, do you see this is your octave key and that funny little, have you, uh, maybe you've never noticed, but there's like a metal bit. It's one of the only keys, uh, the, the two octave keys on the oboe are the only keys that have this little metal bit above the uh, above the key here. And it's kind of a cylinder when you look at it. Um, and there's a little teeny weeny hole in the middle. And that's what helps us get us our beautiful, um, that's what helps uh, us get those beautiful uh, high notes, which I love playing. Um, so thank you very much for this strange little funny key. Now, looking at this, um, You'll notice that there's a little top, little hole here and then a hole here, but there's this little chamber. Do you see that chamber? And that chamber um, is where you get water stuck. That's why we get a lot of water stuck in our octaves keys is because there's this little added little chamber. And so what that knocking will do will actually knock the, um, will knock the, 
uh, uh, water right out of right out of that oboe, so that it just um, if it gets stuck right here, if it gets stuck right here, the knocking will just allow it to go into the board, so you can slip it away. So I just wanted to wanted to explain why um, why that uh, is such a useful trick on the oboe. The fifth thing that I wanted to talk about um, in terms of playing bubble free on the oboe has to do with um, how we can avoid getting water in our instrument. And that has a lot to do with that rivulet or that river that I talked about at the beginning of the presentation um, that goes along the bottom of the oboe. Ideally, what we want to do is create a river that avoids all the pitfalls. It avoids all the places where it can go into a little um, a tone hole and get caught and stuck around and start vibrating with our air. So that we want that this beautiful river to run just simply down the back of our oboe. And one of the ways that we can create that situation is being very mindful how we are holding the instrument when we're playing it and particularly how the instrument is sitting when uh, we're taking small breaks from the instrument. So for example, if you're sitting in orchestra um, at, or a band and you're, or you're in music class, um, and you know we all have a rest position that we put on our knee, uh, what I would like for you to think about is simply holding it at an angle like this. The more you can do that, the less likely you will be to get water in a key. Same goes that if you're practicing and your oboe is really, really warm and um, you need to take a small break from practicing, which I would recommend, um, do a quick swab and then put the oboe somewhere uh, on a couch, on your case, somewhere safe where a flute player's not gonna find it. Um, and But have it sit at an angle. Rather than sitting it up and down like this, sit it at an angle and what that's going to do is help this gravity so your swab hopefully got rid of most of that water but there, if there's any water that's left in there that's left collecting that it can go down a nice gravity river i started being very mindful about the angle at which i was holding my oboe um, and that made a tremendous difference um, in how often i was getting uh, uh, water in a particular key um, even now when I'm reed making, I used to put my oboe on my lap for reed making and now I'm, I'm, I find that I'm just holding it on my shoulder like this so it stays at this nice angle while I'm reed making. Um, and that's made a really big difference. I hope that uh, these uh, five tips to playing bubble free on the oboe have helped you. Um, if you have are interested in more resources as to how to improve your concert experience, um, because as oboists, our job is to uh, serve our communities and to play beautifully and bring more beauty to the world. And if you would like uh, another resource, um, I have a free resource attached to this live presentation. It's called How to Choose a Better Oboe Read. And it's about coming to your concert and being able to choose the best read that's in your case. Um, and uh, how that can improve your concert experience. Um, it is included in the link in my bio or underneath the description of this live, live presentation. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's all become the oboe players we were meant to be, the oboe players that everyone wants to play with. Play with joy and ease. Take care.